Well, I'm actually a Virginia girl, but I consider myself a, a world citizen because I've lived um, in many places and positioned friends in many countries. And I thought what I would try to do for you tonight is talk to you about some struggles in branding and maybe you could take that back to your office environment and drive some inspiration within your teams. Um, much like Candace said, I feel that I've been at the intersection of business and creativity my entire life. I work with creatives and I work with business strategists. Um, we are working on the left side, talking about profits, losses, margins, all of these lovely things. And on the right, we're talking about developing the most beautiful brand campaigns that the world's ever seen. And getting those two sides to meet is a challenge, but a challenge that I very much enjoy. Um, one of the things that I thought that I've seen in my context of my career that I think is very important for artists, left brains, and the like to do is to look outside of your industry and to get inspired by things that you see on the outside of what you may be doing. I think we're all guilty of being in our worlds and getting trapped inside of perhaps if you're in banking or perhaps you're a lawyer or you run an art gallery and you only know that world and you're you don't have the time, you don't have the, well, you don't have the time, let's be honest, we don't have the time to get outside and see what's outside of our industry and what inspiration we can draw from that. So that would be my first thing in saying that um, in branding, we always encourage companies to go outside of their realm and look outside of what they're traditionally doing. And then I thought I would give you just a neat example of a brand that we worked with. This was a European brand category, the chocolate brand. Who likes chocolate? <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, Cadbury is an English brand, for those of you who don't know it, it's two centuries, it's two centuries old. And they were actually stagnating. They were uh, being beat out by a lot of the Swiss chocolatiers. No offense, probably. <laughs> um, and uh, other brands in Europe, and Cadbury was struggling, and yet they had this incredible history in the art, art of chocolate. So they were trying to decide what they could do to not reinvent themselves, but revitalize their brand. And in essence, the plan was to develop a strategy to drive the brand about around a sensory experience. So they spent a lot of money, but it was a very good investment. They brought um, in architects and designers and sensory experts to open a venue where people could come in. They hired actors, musicians, and the like, where people could come in and learn about Montezuma, King Charles II, the um, thing, I have a note here in case I forget. Uh, oh yes, Hernan Cortez. And visitors were able to come in and see the history of chocolate, how chocolate was brought into our world. Most of us, I don't think, really know this. We just eat it and enjoy it and that's it. So visitors came in, they were of course able to sample the chocolate. They were able to see uh, the stories of these great leaders, how chocolate was brought to Europe, um, and all this history. So they linked culture, art, history, what else? Taste, all of these beautiful things to revitalize their brand. And it was one of the most successful revitalization products of a somewhat quiet brand in perhaps the history of Europe. So um, I just wanted to share that experience with you, looking outside of your industry bringing art, bringing culture, bringing beauty, bringing taste to your world and what it can do to drive your profit margins. <laughs> that's the business leader part of it. And that's it. <laughs>